answers every day in every single way. C H O Y C S. God gives us choices every day in every single way. I can run or I can walk. I can see or I can talk. I can be the best that I can be, just like God wants me to. C H O I C S. God gives us choices every day, in every single way. C H O I C S. God gives us choices every day. In a Good morning. How are you? Welcome to Children's Liturgy of the Word. My name is Tish. This is my husband, Mike. Hello. Today we're celebrating the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Now we'll start with the first reading. The first reading is, Our God says, This is how I am. When people turn away from me, and they sin, they are punished for it. But when people are sorry for their sin, they change their lives and do what's right. They are not punished, they are saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll do the response. Let's all say, repeat after me. We live with you. We live with you. Oh God. Oh God. We live forever. We live forever. Very good. Now we'll do the gospel acclamation. Change your lives. Change your lives. And believe in me. And believe in me. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Very good. Now we'll do the gospel. And the gospel is from Matthew, and it's from uh, the New Testament. Okay. Okay. And so for the gospel, we, that's right, we stand up and we make sign across how many times? If you said three, you are correct. So first over four, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us. Uh, open our minds, in a sense, to understand what's being read. But sometimes it's very hard. Then over our lips, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember what we learned so we might get the chance to share our knowledge or what we know with someone else. Then over our hearts, we go up and down and then across. We do that because we're asking the Lord to help us remember to be more friendly and neighborly to everyone. We meet this week. Now we listen to the gospel. Jesus said to the chief priests and the leaders of the people, I'm going to tell you a story, and you tell me what you think about it. There was a man who had two sons. One day he said to one of them, Son, I want you to go out and work in the vineyard today. And the boy said, No. I won't go. But later, the boy was sorry that he had said no to his father. And so he did go. The father said to the other son, Son, I want you to go out and work in the field today. And the second son said, Yes, father, I will go and work. But he did not go. Jesus asked, Now tell me, which boy did what the father wanted him to do? The first son or the second? And the leaders answered, The first son. And Jesus said to them, I'm telling you the truth. People whom you lock down on as sinners are going to enter the reign of God before you. Because when John the Baptist came and preached the truth, you didn't believe him. But the people you looked down on as sinners believed him and changed their lives. 
and even after you saw that they believed and changed their lives, you still didn't believe and change your own lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We can have a seat right where you are. Okay, I'm going to explain the first reading, and Michael's going to explain the Gospel. Now, Prophet Ezekiel is telling us what God is saying. Okay? And this gives us a, a, an idea of God's character. Okay? Because God is saying, when people turn away and they do the act of sinning, okay, they get punished. They're getting punished for the act, you know, for doing the wrong. But when they say they're sorry and they mean it, then they're forgiven. And they start doing, they change, and they start doing things that are right, you know, and they're saved, okay? Sometimes some of us have some bad habits, okay? And uh, the more we do them, you know, we can't correct them. For example, if you have a habit of lying, and you keep lying and not telling the truth, for a while it gets hard, you know, to tell the truth. But you can't change, and that's what God is saying. The sin is lying, yes, and you're doing wrong. But you can change and start doing the truth, start saying the truth. And that's what God is reminding us, that, you know, we're not perfect. You know, we do make mistakes, but he's reminding us that he forgives us, and we have to ask for the forgiveness. We have to be sorry, and that way we'll, we can be saved, okay? okay? In the gospel, it talked about Jesus telling a story, and he goes, what do you think? So he tells the story of a gentleman toward a gentleman, and he says there are people who do um, things, and uh, but not necessarily the right thing. So he then begins the story with, there are two sons, and a man that had two sons. With these two sons, he asked the one to go into the field and work. And so he did. Uh, but then he didn't want to. But then he changed his mind. Ah, uh, you know, I, I should probably go do that. So he went and he actually worked in the field. Now, the second one he told to go work in the field, he said, okay, Father, no problem. But as you can see, he's on a horse and he's riding away. He is not going to work in the field. When he gets to the end of the story, he says to the gentleman who's the scholar there, well, which one did the will of the Father? And he said, well, eventually the first one. In doing so, it reminds us, he, Jesus tells him, you know, remember John the Baptist? And then, yeah. Well, John the Baptist went down the street saying, repent, repent, reform your lives. We have to change our ways if we want to follow Jesus and God. And many people changed. They realized, oh, he's right. We're not doing the right thing the right way. So they followed Jesus and they changed their ways and didn't do that. But yet these gentlemen who would read the, what, what, you know, the scrolls and all the words and the readings over and over again, never changed. They still didn't follow. And Jesus said, just like the two sons, the one says yes, but never changed. And that's what he's like. But yet the people who saw John the Baptist realized, changed their ways, and followed. And he says, that's what you're supposed to do. 
So what does that mean for us today right now? How many of us sometimes get mad at our brother and sister and we want to push them because we get mad? Well, if we change our ways, we would try to catch ourselves where we oh, walk away or something like that and don't push our brother and sister. Now, if we catch ourselves and we don't push our brother and sister, even when we're mad, we have changed our ways. We have done something that would normally not be good and we did to stop doing it. So we did like the first one did. He changed his mind not to push or do the wrong thing. And the other one did not. So if you keep pushing your brother and sister, you have not changed. You're like this gentleman, Jesus was saying, you have to change or you're not going to be able to follow me. And that was like in the first reading, bad habits, that can be considered kind of like that. So pushing your brother and sister, saying bad words. Um, uh, your mom tells you something, you talk back, things like that. Those are the things that you can change and make it where you don't do those and it be nice. Or, you know, even if you go off to yourself and then come back when you're calm and it over, that's a way of changing so you don't do something bad. And that's what Jesus is telling us, to change our bad habits or things sometimes we don't do right and fix ourselves to where we're doing it more like what Jesus would do. Okay? All right. Okay, so today what I'd like to talk about is on September 29th, we are celebrating the day of the archangels. Okay? So an archangel, remember, um, they are the angels, God's right hand. Okay? They're the top angels. Okay, they're on the top line, then you have the cherubims and the cherubs and the triumphant, you know, and it goes down the line. But there were three arch, well, there were four archangels, okay? There was Michael, you know, the defender, and there's Gabriel, who appeared to Mary and Joseph in dreams, remember? There's Raphael, okay? And the fourth angel, his name was Lucifer. But remember, he wanted control over the earth, and he fought God, and so he ended up going to... And didn't change his ways. He didn't change his ways, and so he ended up going to hell, okay? So we celebrate that day, the four archangels, the three archangels, okay? And then on October 1st, is we celebrate St. Therese of Jesus. Okay, she was a young girl and she was about 14 years old. She had lost her mother before and so she had prayed. She prayed to Mary and Mary appeared and said that she would be her mother. But she also had a very strong relationship with Jesus and Jesus had appeared to her a few times. She became a sister so you notice that she's wearing the brown with the veil, the black veil, she's carrying the crucifix, okay? So we celebrate her on October 1st. And we also have that one in stained glass in the church. Right, we have her in stained glass window. And then on October 2nd, we celebrate guardian angels. Now, each one of us has a guardian angel. And what's the job of the guardian angel? To protect us. So that the minute you're born to the minute that you pass away, your guardian angel is always there to protect you. Okay? Can we see them? No. But we know that they're always there. So we have a book and explains about the angels, okay? And uh, the angels were always around when Jesus was around, okay? They too protected him, okay? And so they're like our friend, our spiritual friend, okay? And in the Old Testament, the angels used to appear to men like Moses and um, Jeremiah and Isaiah. The angels appeared to them. And then also, 
The angels appeared, remember Daniel and the Daniel then appeared to him also. So were there different times through his the, the Bible in history that angels appear. Do they appear now? Oh yeah, the angels appear to us today and now. So it's all in the Bible, okay? So that's what we're talking about. Now we'll talk about the prayers of the faithful, okay? No, the creed first. Oh, the creed, I'm sorry, we'll do the creed. Okay, let's all say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, because he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Okay, now we'll do the prayers of the faithful. Okay. We pray for the church, for Pope Francis for bishops, priests, and deacons, religious, and all who serve the people of God in love and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parents and family members who love us and care for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishioners who may be sick or alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for anybody you think of, uh, whether you're at home, in your room, in the outside. Uh, if you think of someone or see someone and you think they could use a prayer, simply say it to yourself. We ask the Lord to hear that prayer and answer it as fast as you can. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay. Well, it was so good to see you and to be with you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, we hope you have a good week, okay? Bye. Every single way I can grow and I can change. I don't have to be the same. I can be the best that I can be. Just like God.